Hey, welcome back. Today's video is another one of those testing videos. You know, I've received a lot of requests for testing for humidity. And while the subject has been well covered for powder in its storage and then loading after it was exposed to humidity, nobody seems to have tested what happens when you expose loaded ammunition to various humidities. Well, today I decided to take care of that problem. But before we get started, I opened a brand new box of burger bullets the other day and found a little sticker inside and thought, how ironic. So for today's test, I used ammunition that I had loaded for Southwest Nationals. It was all loaded at one time, and this load is light for the barrel that I'm using. It's not a tuned load for this barrel. The reason I'm doing this is I don't know what's going to happen to the pressure and want to be safe. So we're down around 2750-ish for velocity with this load. Before we start, I took 20 rounds and split it into four groups. The first five were put on the bench here in my load room, where the humidity goes up and down with the weather outside a little bit. It is a climate controlled house, but it's not perfect. And as a result, I saw humidities that ranged anywhere from 48% to 65% during the one month period of time that I soaked the ammunition. Now, when I say soak the ammunition, I did not submerge anything in water. If you're submerging your ammo in water, you're on your own. I'm not here to help you with that. No, what I did instead is I placed ammunition in separate containers, the remaining 15 rounds in five round groups. The first one had desiccant in it and had an average humidity inside the container of 18% for that one month period of time. The next group of five was put in a separate container. And this contained a 49% Bovita bag, actually two of them. The average humidity inside of that box was 55% for the one month period. The last batch of five was put in a separate box again with 84% Bovita bags. Now, 84%, that's pretty high, but it simulates the South or maybe even, say, Indiana in the summertime. It gets hot and it gets wet. I kept the temperature in here relatively constant or as constant as the heat and air conditioning in the house would allow. It ranged from 66 to 74 degrees in this room during that one month period of time. And as you probably already know, the humidity, the relative humidity, is a relative percentage of how much water the air can hold. If I raise the temperature and keep the same amount of water in the air, the humidity level drops because the air can hold more water when it's warmer. So after sitting here on my bench for a month, soaking in their various conditions, I took all the ammunition to the range to shoot a simple velocity test. I did not shoot groups necessarily, although I was shooting at a target, because this is not a tuned load in this rifle. It wasn't about tune, it was about velocity and what happens to the velocity when we do this to our ammunition. This was ammunition that I took to Southwest Nationals and didn't shoot. So it's been around for several months and I wanted to show you what happens. Now it was loaded for a different barrel than the one I shot it in, just so you know. The firing series was pretty simple. I fired one shot of the control group, followed by one shot of the desiccated group, followed by one shot that had the 49% Bovita bag in it and one shot with the 84% Bovita bag in it. I then went back to the control and fired another round and continued that pattern all the way through round robin until I had fired a total of 20 rounds. Now, before we get too far, let me be very clear. The number of rounds fired prevents statistical significance. It's impossible to get a statistically significant outcome from this low number of rounds. It's only a five shot group of each configuration. And I'm not gonna put three or four or 500 rounds out there to create statistical significance. I just wanted to see if there was anything obvious here. So the best we're gonna have is a suggestive result. All right, let's take a look at the velocity data. Here's a control group, pretty good ES, pretty good standard deviation. It's only five shots again. Remember, it's five shots. Now the desiccated group and the 49% Bovita bag group. And now the 84% Bovita bag group. This is what I take from this test. First, you're not going to load ammunition at home, then go somewhere, wait a month, and then shoot it after exposing it to high humidities or low humidities. You're going to get there and you're probably going to shoot within a few days. So 
the likelihood of having any significant change is pretty low. With that in mind, even if this happened in the first 24 hours, let's look at the actual results. From our control and our 49% Bovita bag, which were ultimately about identical in their humidity levels where they were stored, I had a very slight difference in average velocity. When we look at the desiccated, we have a slight increase in velocity, but only a couple of feet per second. Now, this is after a month in desiccant. And then the very, very wet 84% Bovita bag, it reduced the velocity just a little bit, not a huge amount. It moved the average velocity downward. The difference in actual velocity, even after a pretty long soak, is pretty minimal, which suggests that if we let it soak for a year or more, we might see a bigger result because I don't think that the water molecules are getting into the case very quickly at all. With that in mind, you know, it really didn't change the ES or SD for any given group. They were all about the same and within reason of each other. As a matter of fact, if, if I were to do a statistical test, I would find no statistical significance to anything. Not even the average velocity change, I don't think. I'm not going to bother because the sample size is just too small. And at the same time, when I look at it as a whole, all 20 rounds together, the extreme spread was only 15, and the standard deviation was only slightly over 4. That's a pretty good result, considering I had treated all of the ammunition differently. All in all, conclusion is that, you know what? Build your ammo up at home, under controlled conditions, and take it wherever you need to go and go shoot. And I would not recommend submerging it in water on the way there. Alright guys, that's all I have for this one. Until next time, shoot straight, and I'll see you in the next video.